When so many things go wrong in a person's life, when they feel like they're drowning, that's when they need help. When you can't talk about why you're trapped, when you can't tell anybody why you feel invisible, that's a prison that's so difficult to break free of. You need a key. You need someone to listen. But most importantly, you need someone to take action. Sometimes we see what we want to see. And often that makes some people feel invisible. I matter to myself and I don't know if I matter to anybody else. Well, I know I do, but I don't feel like I do. We're too busy. Look. What would it take to, to change that for you? It would take people believing in me. This is Anna Marie's story. But it's really much bigger than that. A lot of us can find bits and pieces of our lives woven in her words. Nobody knows what I go through. <laughs> Nobody knows what I've been through. Anna Marie will tell you what she can about her world. Me, I'm 16. Um, my life sucked so far, but I make the best of it. <laughs> her dad's in jail for 18 plus years. She doesn't say why. Oh, the reason is so important, but at 16, she can't go there yet. Well, I've been through a lot, and <laughs> I somehow stay on top of it. At her alternative high school in Coos Bay, she struggles to get back on track. Wasted time translates into hard work. Did you get your GED? No, I, I can, but I don't want to. I want to graduate. Why? Because I got told I wouldn't graduate, so I'm kind of... <laughs> the Harding School is her constant. It's a refuge, a place that gives her something to hold on to. Do you dream? I gave up on dreaming a long time ago. <laughs> How did a 16-year-old girl become invisible? Life has not always been kind to Anna Marie, but again, that part of the story she'll hold on to for now. I've cut my wrist. Not deep enough to do any damage, just deep enough to hurt myself a little bit. <laughs> what were you looking for? I was looking for relief. Sometimes physical pain is easier to handle than the kind that haunts the mind. I hide behind my mask every day. <laughs> just every time I smile, I'm hiding my face. So take off the mask for me. <laughs> I can't. Somebody drove down the road and even glanced at me. They'd see me, they wouldn't know nothing about me. And I want people, I want to know people. I want to want people to know me. I don't know. <laughs> they just see a girl with, that looks happy, but they, don't, they all, nobody knows how miserable I actually am inside. Anna Marie is on her own. I couldn't take it. I couldn't take being blamed of everything I wasn't doing because it just <laughs> made me not want to succeed in nothing because they all accused me of <laughs> being the bad child. And I was trying my best to be good. <laughs> she moved out, all the way out. And my mom asked me or told me, she goes, I'll pay for you getting emancipated if you want to do it. And so I'm like, okay. And I did it. <laughs> so I have to work. I have to have a job. And yeah, I'm an adult compared to, uh, legally I can get in trouble for anything an adult can get in trouble for. Because sometimes I feel like there's nothing, or there's nothing, why did all this? Why did I get emancipated? Why did I, why do I work so hard? Why, why can't I be a kid? <laughs> did you ever get to be a kid? Not really. <laughs> and I wish, I wish most of all right now I could be, but I'm the furthest away from being a kid. I'm 16 and live a life of a 19 or 20 year old. Or a 40 year old. Yeah. I work 40 hours a week and go to school on top of that. School is important. Because without that, where am I supposed to make it? <laughs> Her second chance. I sleep on a couch right now. <laughs> She's tired and stressed out and weary and... The and part's what gets me. Because if I was just working and going to school, I doubt I'd be as tired as I am. But having to stress over 
what I'm going to eat for dinner, <laughs> what I'm supposed to, how I'm supposed to do laundry, uh, how I'm supposed to have time to do laundry. <laughs> that gets to me a lot. <laughs> She's hoping to buy this old RV from her mom, set it up at a nearby park, and have her own place. I work at Burger King, and that's lots of fun. <laughs> I, I, I love work. I love being out of the house. I love being busy. I want a vacation away from everything, <laughs> away from everybody, away from myself, yes, and that's not going to happen, so. You crave change. You sense it doesn't have to be this way, but the falling, again, is more powerful than the desire for different. I'm always tired of mentally, tired of everything, but I don't know how I'd rather have it. So what really happened to Anna Marie? What happens to all the others? Nobody understands why I really left. I just think I rebelled and took off. <laughs> That's not how it was. If I would have stayed here, I don't think I would be here anymore. I don't think I could have made it. Hiding is never easy. Covering up takes great effort. Because I get so tired, I just like give up on everything. And I just have to go outside and I ball my eyeballs out for a good almost 10 minutes and then I'm good. I always tell everybody I'm fine. I may be out of my mind and so stressed out I can't handle much more, but I'm always fine. <laughs> I always put a smile on my face. It's like I hide behind my smile. I felt that way for a long time though, so. <laughs> what would happen if you didn't have that to hide behind? What would I see? <laughs> You would see somebody fall apart, probably. <laughs> you really feel like that, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> Not much people know that. <laughs> Anna Marie wants to tell her whole story. She wishes it were possible. She knows that's what makes her invisible. But trust is like a step over the Grand Canyon. They need to understand that they can't give up on us. <laughs> they gotta help us as much as they can. They can't just like be mad at us and not want to help us. I know I'm tough. I pretend I'm tougher than what I am though. Because if you could sit down and really say what you feel, there's a seven-year-old girl in there screaming. Isn't there? <laughs> yes. Just love me, care about me, touch me, talk to me. Say that I matter. Yeah. All that stuff. It's hard, isn't it? Yep. I get lonely a lot. Lonely for somebody to care. I think I ripped off being a kid, man. I seriously wish I could be a kid. That's what I miss the most right now. <laughs> I don't even have time to hang out with friends. I don't have time to do nothing. Visible. It doesn't have to be this way. I wish people would open their eyes. Seriously, that's how come I'm here, because somebody opened their eyes and seen how I really was, seen who I was. You mean I could change somebody's life just by paying attention? Yes, of course you could. Seriously? Yes. <laughs> how does that work? You care a little bit. You. <laughs> you just pay attention to somebody. You get to know somebody. Why does that matter? Why does that matter? Because people matter. People's feelings matter. So what can you do to help people become visible? Here's Grace Serbu's advice. She works with troubled kids. If you did look at them and smile at them, you have no idea what that means to that person. Rick, I have seen an incredible profound difference through mentoring. And what that is is human, human elements. Somebody who just is there taking you to coffee or helping you s sit there with you. They need it so badly because they feel hopeless. They feel worthless in this community. A businessman in Eugene and a few in North Bend heard her story. They raised $4,500 in cash. Shannon Nill and the Guarantee RV Centers in Junction City cut them a deal on a 28-foot travel trailer that was delivered to Anna Marie just before Thanksgiving. She couldn't believe it. Anna Marie has a home, her own home. Home means somewhere I can go and curl up in a nice big old warm ball and fall asleep. 
not worry about anything. <laughs> Anna Marie didn't ask for it. And yes, she is on her way. The extra money raised pay her rent at the trailer park. And there's more. The Bell Fountain Community Church near Monroe heard Anna Marie's story and bought a bunch of household items for her. Things like blankets, fry pans, silverware, household goods, food cards, household cleaners, and the list goes on and on. You see, this is the secret to visibility. It happens one person at a time.